Here's our panel moderator, distinguished Toastmaster, Abram George. Warm up applause, please. Mr. MC Verge, thank you for that. Hey, friends, welcome back to our main room here. This is a panel session. You're going you're gonna to get a lot of, out of this. This will be a lot of fun. This is going to be really educational. And I invite you to take notes because at the end of this, you're going to get some ideas from our amazing panel of experts. So think about this. Before COVID, before COVID, we were meeting in person. So think back to 2019. That's 1 BC, one year before COVID. We were, meeting in, we were meeting in person, now we're meeting online, and there are all sorts of combinations and other ways to meet and have meetings, and we're going to cover those different options in this panel session. You're going to meet our amazing panelists. And, oh, I see well, there's lots of people on the screen here, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see our panelists. So I'm wondering if you're not a panelist, if you're not a moderator, or not Verge, <laughs> if you could turn your video off, turn your camera off, it'd be great to see your faces as uh, get the expressions and whatever's going on here. And then, oh, hey, I can, I found our panelists and great. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm also going to hide non-video participants. And before you get to meet our amazing, I just went full screen on my, my computer here. Boy, I didn't realize so good. Like, you know what? This doesn't just happen. <laughs> A lot of effort. Before, I, before you meet our amazing panelists, we're going to take a little poll here to find out how are you, your club's meeting right now. So Frank, are you running the poll? Sorry. Yes, I just launched it. Okay, fabulous. There is there. It's the untitled poll. The untitled poll. How's your club meeting? Is it in person, online, hybrid, alternating online or hybrid, alternating online or in person? Now, you might be thinking, well, I have a, a memberships in multiple clubs. Well, what you have to do is just pick your favorite club. It's like picking your favorite child. We won't tell. But this will just give us a general sense of what's happening out there. So right now, online is in the lead. It's coming out ahead. It's 56%. Number two, hybrid, 28%. In-person, 7%. And then alternating, online hybrid, alternating, online in-person, neck and neck, coming down the stretch, 5% and 4% respectively. All right, fabulous. Thank you for participating. That was the interactive portion of our session so far. All right, so can, so Frank, is it okay if I close this or can I just move this off to the side? Okay, I, I closed the, the, the poll results. Fabulous. Friends, thank you so much for participating. It gives us a general sense of what's going on out there. Oh, Emma says the poll disappeared before I could participate. So my three clubs are all online. Look at that. What a great looking panel. Darren, I agree with you. I'm the one bringing down the average. Oh, I'm the cute one. All right. So here are our four panelists. So I'm going to start off by introducing our poll. I'm going to introduce our first panelist, Marcus Udo Kang. Marcus, give us a big wave. Hey, there's Marcus. So Marcus has been in Toastmasters for two years this month. Happy birthday, Marcus. That's right, the terrific twos. It's notable accomplishments. Well, this year, or this month, in two, that's going to be two years, he's going to complete his Distinguished Toastmaster Award, DTM. That's right. And how is he doing that? He's joined six clubs in Canada, the UK, and Qatar. But wait, that's not all. He has visited clubs online around the world. And how many do you think? There is, well, I don't have enough fingers for that. So I'm going to say 92. 
That's right. Around the world five times. Look at that. Thanks, Marcus. Represent. So Marcus joined Toastmasters to improve his public, public speaking skills. Well, and he is really enjoying that. And there's more leadership, public relations, mentoring, evaluation, and it goes on. Marcus, that is amazing. Marcus, that was your formal introduction, but I'm going to ask you, you joined for public, uh, public speaking skills, which I can't do right now. Public speaking skills in the last two years, how has Toastmasters helped you meet that objective? Just keeping busy, keeping busy and keep on doing it. Don't stop. That's right. Keep on keeping on. Very good, Marcus. And Marcus is going to be talking about online, obviously. He's a big proponent of that. Our second panelist today, Frank Turcato. Frank has set up that poll for us. But Frank joined Toastmasters since the dinosaurs went extinct. Frank enjoys the fun, the laugh, and all the knowledge shared at his clubs. So Frank joined Toastmasters to gain confidence in public speaking. That's, that was his personal why. But what he really enjoys now is seeing the other people in his club gaining that confidence. Good on you, Frank. And one of his notable accomplishments, well, he's become, uh, became an area director. That's pretty cool, Frank. So Frank, you joined Toastmasters for increasing your uh, your confidence in public speaking. How has the last two years in Toastmasters helped you reach that goal? Uh, it's, it's a different a different experience than uh, the online portion because it it have in the last two years it's mostly on mostly online. So I learned about Zoom. <laughs> I I started having more more meetings with my family you know, online. So that was great. Um, I, I, beca I became an area director and was very busy with a, you know, a lot of aspects and learning about the whole behind the scenes aspect of Toastmasters, which was a learning in itself and trying to motivate other people and other clubs to participate in, in pathways and, and, and speaking. Right. Fabulous. Thank you, Frank. And you can see here, uh, Frank is going to be talking about alternating and what that means for his club is alternating online one week and hybrid the next week. I'm going to move on with our next panelist, Lynette Terrio. Lynette has been in Toastmasters for nearly eight years. And a big accomplishment that she's so proud of is be being named Toastmaster of the Year for District 42 in 2021. That's last year. This is still fresh. She still has that Toastmaster of the Year smell. It's like an air freshener, isn't it? No, she says no to that. What does she enjoy about Toastmasters? It's the people. It's all about the people. Uh, Lynette has been an adult educator for 20 plus years. And she's always felt that she's had a pretty good grasp of public speaking. Now, getting the opportunity to set leadership goals and gain these leadership skills has been paramount in Lynette's time at Toastmasters and Toastmasters has provided these opportunities and then some. So that is Lynette's formal introduction. Lynette, so you joined for the leadership skills. How has Toastmasters helped you uh, achieve that in the last couple of years? Well, good evening, everyone. I wouldn't have had so many of the leadership opportunities that I've had were it not for Toastmasters. I work I, by myself and therefore I am a leader of one most of the time. So this has been an amazing opportunity to be able to completely screw up and not get fired. Okay, well, good job. You're not fired. You're going to stick around for this panel. Thanks, Lynette. Welcome. Our fourth panelist is Awa Majub. Awa is a component of in-person meetings, so you can see that in-person meetings right there. So Awa, Awa has been in Toastmasters for almost three years. Notable accomplishments. Well, she's done quite a bit, but one of the things that she's really proud of is of completing her term as area director. That's right. Well done. 
and it puts her one step closer towards her distinguished Toastmasters DTM award. Why did Awa join Toastmasters? Well, her boss recommended it. And he knew that she could benefit benefit from, from the Toastmasters experience. And boy, did she ever. She has done so much. It has most significantly improved confidence in herself, which is one of her biggest hurdles. So she enjoys the benefits it brings to her life. And, and there's that return on investment is well worth the time. So Awa, tell us, how has the Toastmaster program helped you out in the last two years? Thank you, Abraham, and good evening. It's helped me in so many different aspects of my life. There's too many to count. But I guess the challenge of going through Zoom and the whole new format that we had, learning through that change was a really big experience for me, and it's helped me through so many faucets, especially the confidence. Fabulous. And you're confident enough to be on the panel here. Nice. Nice. I'm going to get into this. What we're going to do here is I'm going to present uh, three sets of questions to our panelists. And then, friends, you're going to have, get a chance to ask them some questions as well. Go ahead and put some questions in the chat window. And this is what I am asking you to do. Put the word question, capital letters, so that I can see it. And I'll be able to easily identify it in the chat window and put your question there. And then we'll give you a chance to ask. The, uh, I'll pose those questions on your behalf. Then they'll wrap up with a final statement after that. So here's the first, oh, these are our panels. And the first question, what, so this is an opportunity for you to give us your, your pitch for why you're representing one of these. What are the advantages? And Marcus, I'm going to call on you to get us started. What are one of the advantages of? Of online. What are the advantages of online meetings, Marcus? All right. Well, let's put it this way. Resistance is futile. And just to echo what Michael Bayer talked about, what's in it for you. I think that most clubs, many clubs around the world have gone international. That's what Michael Bayer mentioned. In other words, it's more global than ever before. And one way to be able to become part of that global village is to get online. Do you want to drive your car to your in-person meeting, park, spend gas, which is now $1.90 per liter, not a dollar, which it was a couple of years ago prior to COVID? Do you want to spend time getting dressed, <laughs> going to that meeting, coming home and getting undressed. I belong to six clubs. I have a full-time job and I got other things that I do too. Guess what? I can do it all online, zippity doo da. So it's all about different strokes for different folks. If it fits your schedule, by all means do it. If you prefer the in-person, do that too. Fabulous, thanks for getting us started with that. Marcus, Marcus is wearing his bunny slippers right now. And to, every, and to all 92 clubs around the world. Marcus, thank you for that. Frank, you're up next. Tell us about all your clubs alternating hybrid and online. So tell us what's going on in your world. Oh, th thank you, Abraham. Uh, so we do, we do alter, we alternate between the hybrid and online, as, as you said. And we're coming what we're trying to do is be flexible. We're coming off the COVID. People weren't sure whether they want to be in, in person. And then there were people that were still working remotely. So they weren't back into the office. So we're trying to accommodate everybody and get them the most number of people into a meeting as possible. We've actually had people who do not want to be on the online meeting. They say it, you, you miss the body language, you miss the energy, you miss reading the room. Um, so there's all these benefits to being uh, in person. Um, but I, you know, I just, we just heard Marcus talk about the benefits of, of um, being on Zoom and how easy it is to be there and uh, doesn't take a lot of effort. And so there's a lot of benefits. We're trying to be flexible, trying to accommodate people who like both both things at the moment. 
right? Thank you, Frank. And Frank, uh, you just want it all. You just want it all. Just hybrid, in person, online. You want it all. Thank you for that. We call on. So you're so in your club. One week it's hybrid. One week it's on online. Now Lynette is going to be talking about merging all of that together so that it's hybrid all the time. So Lynette, tell us about the advantages of hybrid. Well, here's my sales pitch for hybrid meetings, choice and consistency. The choice gives your members the option of either being online or in person every single meeting. And the reason why that's important is because that's going to vary from person to person, from week to week to week. One week you might be out of town for work and you can still join in if your club is having that hybrid meeting. What I like about the consistency of every meeting being hybrid is that we don't have that confusion that can come in. Is, is this an in-person week? Is this not an in-person week? Is is it happening? Are we going to have guests showing up where there isn't actually a meeting going on? And so that way we always will have people in a room, always will have people online. And then I think the third advantage to that would be the ability to really learn and master those skills to put together that hybrid meeting and make it as slick as can be. Something kind of like zippity doo perhaps. Thank you, Lynette. And I think zippity doo is now going to be our, our word of the day for the rest of our evening. And use it as many times as you can throughout the course of the meeting and give us a, give us a thumbs up every time you use it. Uh, Lynette, let's talk about that consistency. And it just works really slick once you get going with it. Thank you, Lynette. And we're going to move on to Awa. Awa. Awa is a people person. So tell us about the advantages of meeting in person. So... When I say in person, I almost feel like it's archaic, but there is an irrefutable, undeniable truth that Zoom is so convenient. However, the in-person Toastmaster experience enhances and elevates that Toastmaster experience with by three things. And they are, it enhances member engagement, it enhances the skill building opportunities, and it enhances the meeting effectiveness or club quality. Quickly, member engagement, we're all about human connection. Don't underestimate the effect of that handshake or hearing people clap after you say, it, you say your speech. It helps enhance the interpersonal skills, the connections, the bonding, the club spirit. It builds club culture, helps with recruiting your members and retaining our members. All of these help foster the growth of the club and the growth of the members. It enhances your skill building opportunities because when you're behind the screen, you still get to hide, right? But when you're in person, you really have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to stretch yourself. Um, you get to exercise the body language more. You work on the eye contact. You got to read the room and you get to hear people's reactions. And finally, it enhances the club quality. How so? You get to hear people's reactions, the applause, the handshakes, inviting people in, staying at the end and chit-chatting and building that, that connection. Uh, imagine being on a stage and speaking this amazing speech and not hearing anybody clap for you. So imagine that feeling, that opposite feeling, standing on the stage and hearing everybody clap for you. What is that going to do for your self-confidence and for your next speech? Back to you, Abe. Uh, well, I think you made some great points there because I saw Marcus smiling and he nodded once or twice. If you can get Marcus to come over to the other side, <laughs> you, you might be making a pretty strong case. Well, that was great. We're getting started with the advantages, but is, everybody's making some great points. Is it all sunshine and rainbows in your world or are there some challenges and some learnings? So we're going to mix up, we're going to change up the order here. Frank, what are some challenges and some learnings from your alternating style? Um, well, the, the challenges uh, with, with hybrid, though, is, is the connection, the technology, because we're doing a, a bit of a hack. We've got just the very basic, if someone wants to go there, we've got a laptop on a, a, swiveling, uh, a swiveling music stand. 
So when there's the speaker is, is speaking in front of us, it's faced toward him. Uh, however, if uh, there's someone on online, then we have to swivel that laptop so everyone in the audience can can see them. So it's a it's a basic hack. We just doing it because we're a small club. I mean, I don't have the money for a lot of equipment, so uh, sort of a life hack type of uh, scenario. Um, I think the other parts of of the disadvantages there or, or cons is you need to keep 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 the communication lines opening uh, when you're having guests and making sure that although we we have hybrid and then online, so they can always connect with us. Uh, but just getting them out to a, a live meeting um, and making sure everyone's on on page, and, and to do that we're consistent. So each week we in, we're in, one week we're on Zoom, the next week we're hybrid in and live at, at the uh, meeting place. Back to you, Abraham. Thank you, Frank. Now move on to Lynette. What are some challenges and learnings from hybrid? Well, I think Frank articulated a lot of the challenges really well, because it is something that definitely has some, some kinks that have to be worked out. It can be potentially expensive for a club to gather and gain and purchase the infrastructure necessary to hold a really high quality hybrid meeting. There's lots of great hacks. There's lots of great ways to go about doing it on the cheap, so to speak but it does definitely require a commitment of money. It does require a pretty major commitment from the people in the club to commit to being there a little extra early to get set up and stay a little extra late to tear down. And then one thing that we are kind of struggling with as a club is who's going to be responsible for the equipment? Where does it live? How does it get to the meetings? And what if somebody can't come in and they're the one with the equipment? So there's a lot of things that really a club needs to sit down and make that decision. Can we actually commit to all of the things necessary? And then the last disadvantage with, or potential disadvantage with any kind of an online meeting is your Wi-Fi accessibility and what happens if that goes down back to you and it's kind of like that right when you freeze up thanks lynette we'll go to al out so what are some challenges and learnings for in person securing a venue that is really the biggest piece of it i know within division c there's a, a lot of downtown uh, clubs, so that is accessible to them. Whereas if you're outside of the core, you might not have that same liberty. Taking the time to walk, drive, as was mentioned, uh, you know, price of gas. These are all challenges because we need to convince these people that, you know, we want to try going back into on per in person. So these are some of the challenges. As Lynette mentioned, the logistics is a really big piece. Um, and I guess we don't get that exposure to the international, that, the, that international focus that Marcus was mentioning as well. And I think one of the small pieces as well is the fear that some people still have. I mean, that, that is a challenge to convince people to come back and that it's safe and that you can benefit from the in-person. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Awa. And thanks, thanks for that. I see a lot of com questions coming in in the chat window, and I'm going to make an executive decision here. I'd like to get as many of those questions answered as possible. So instead of going to our third panel question, let's go to the audience Q&A. So here's the first one that came in. It's from Brad. How do you ensure equity of speakers and members in hybrid meetings? There's often strong lag for online members, and in-person members may bowl over them. So Lynette, this could be for you. Okay, I'll take that one. As with anything that we do, especially when it's a new skill we're trying to learn, it's going to require a lot of problem solving. We just have to make sure that we don't, as those in the room, that we don't forget 
those that are on the screen. I've been to hybrid meetings where that's the case. I've been one of the online people and it's like, hello, don't forget about us in here on our little tiny screen. Anything can be done and anything can be done well, but what it takes is a commitment to understand what the challenges are, to work through those challenges, to be honest with ourselves about how it feels to be that online person or to be that in-person person and working through those challenges and trying new things and not being so stuck in one particular way that, well, we've always held the meeting this way. So we're always going to continue to do the meeting that way. Even though what worked in person before might not work now that we're going hybrid, we might have to change the configuration of the room, turn things around a little bit. So communication, practice, and honesty of how things are going, and then constantly revisiting how things are working so that no one feels like they're getting the short end of the stick. Communication. Is there a place that we can go for that? Lynette, thanks for talking about the about hybrid. And you used an interesting term, in person, and that's what we've been using here in this panel. You might hear a lot of people using the word live. Well, live can also mean, you think about in the TV sense, the news is coming live, but we're not there, but we're not there. So I, that's why I like the, the phrase in person, because it's a little bit more accurate. Thanks, Lynette. Here's a question from Richard. What new skills are needed to present during an online only meeting and those that are needed during a hybrid meeting? So I'm, Frank, I'm gonna to go to you first and maybe uh, Marcus could supplement that uh, right after. Or could you just repeat that question? Yes, what new skills are needed to present during an online only meeting and those that are needed during a, a hybrid meeting? You know, I, I don't think the, the skills are much, much different. I think they're a lot, a lot the same. Um, I think there's the, there is that issue with the online, in the hybrid meetings with the online people and making sure that they're fully um, engaged as well and, and taken care of. Um, personally, I think, personally, I think the skills are the same. That's, that's my take on things. And uh, thank you, thanks Frank for, for getting us started there. Yeah, the skills, communication skills are still communication skills. I'm gonna to go to Marcus, but I've got one point to add to that. But Marcus, what, do you, what else do you have to add? I think I'd have to agree with Frank. The skills are very similar. Uh, you know, listening, communication, observing, taking notes, being engaged, all those things. I think what makes it a challenger for those who aren't familiar with the online environment or are going from in person after five, six, seven, eight years and trying to adapt to 100% online. Those who started with online, like myself, I've never been, I never started out in Toastmasters with in person. I've never been to a 100% in person meeting. So this is all I know. I have no other frame of reference. That's right. Well, so it, it's not so much a challenge for me. It's just the way it was from day one. That's right. Thank you, Mark. So I'm going back to Frank. Yes, <laughs> you got your hand up. In terms of skills, when, w one of the things though is l learning Zoom and being able to sh share the screen effectively. So it's 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 more of the call it technology or, or adapting to the the Zoom learnings that you need to effectively navigate. You know, polls or admitting people or whatever or sharing screens and that sort of thing. So that's one of the skills that. You, is different in, in Zoom. Okay. And here, here's the, my one new skill, not making eye contact. I'm looking into the camera now to talk to you. So I'm not looking at anybody's eyes. So as opposed to when we're in person, I'm, we'll be looking around and making eye contact with people. So it's, it's a different type of communication skill. Uh, I guess if we were, went into broadcasting or journalism, we would learn that sort of thing. Thank you folks for that. Question from Darren, uh, what are some ways we found that help to close the connection gap that seems to exist between meeting online versus meeting in 3D in person? Some ways to close that connection gap. 
So th this is, I'm putting this out to anybody who wants to take that. I'll take that. Oh, yes. I would say the way to make that connection is to possibly do what Frank is saying, alternating. If you've never tried in person, I highly recommend you find a club and just try it. See what it's like. Because if, as Marcus said, you don't know what you don't know. So if you've never tried the in-person, maybe it's something that your club wants to think about, you know, giving that choice of doing in-person and online or whatever works for your club. Because I've heard a third of our Toastmaster members are pandemic Toastmasters. So they're missing out on a lot, I would say. Right, thank you, Awa. Uh, move on to a question from Beth. When you're alternating meetings, do you pay, pay for rent two days a month in advance? Over to you, Frank. Uh, yes, sir. We, uh, I, think, I think the church uh, pays us, we pay the church uh, after, not in advance, but uh, um, post, post the meeting, so. Now Frank's club meets in a church. It's the Church of Postmasters. <laughs> we, we meet in the choir room, which is a, a, a number of raised uh, risers in, in the room, uh, so that it, um, it's more like an auditorium than a, uh, a normal board meeting. Okay, thanks, Frank. Now, this is a question from Anand, and he's specifically directing it for Marcus. What is holding back the club from trying in a hybrid setting slash in-person setting? What are the possible challenges? Well, there are a slew of challenges. First of all, if you're going to be an online club, you're probably going to be global. If you want to be an in-person club, chances are you're probably going to be very local, just people within a certain vicinity. And we've seen over the last couple of years, clubs have been diminishing in members. And this is a huge problem. So how do you overcome that? One way is to have the hybrid or the online option. The other problem is rent. I belong to a club where it's costing us $400 a month to pay for rent. Do you know what to break even? We need a minimum of 30 people. We only have 16. How are we gonna fix that? Well, you either go to a place that's free, but if that's the case, then you don't have a choice on the time that you can select for that um, rental space. So the next option is to go online. Uh, some other big issues are eliminating dead space. When you're in person, you can talk all you want, have pauses, but if you do that online, you create dead space and people become uninterested. So a two hour meeting online becomes difficult. A one hour to one and a half meeting online becomes very doable if it's bang, 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 bang. You keep people engaged. Everyone's used to those split seconds on their cell phones, television sets. If you don't give them that constant action, they will tune out. So these are some of the challenges between online versus in-person and the fear of change, like Alwa mentioned. Everybody wants the old way, right? Well, times are a-changing and that's an old song and they still are changing. So um, if you want to be competitive, go global, go online. Thank you. Well, that song hasn't changed. That's still the same song. I'm going to sneak in one more question here before we go to your, your final thoughts. This might be a, a quick answer from Josiah. It probably depends on the amount of regular attendees. But if an online club is wanting to go hybrid, how many members should be in favor of adding in-person meetings for the club to switch to hybrid? Well, I don't know. Yes, Lynette. I'll take that. That is a fantastic question because if you don't have enough bodies in the room, a hybrid meeting really kind of falls apart. You need to have that combination of energy. My recommendation is that no less than five people in the room. So people have to commit. And again, this comes down to communication ahead of time. Have a spot on the agenda to say who's going to be there in person, who's going to be there online. And have that conversation that 
we need to maintain that minimum number of people in the room, partly to get the room set up because it takes a lot. And the more, you know, what is that? Many hands make light work. So having enough people in the room to help set up, having enough people in the room to create that energy, having enough people to fulfill roles in each of those two mediums is really critical. All right. Thank you, Lynette. Well, we're going to wrap up the audience questions now. Uh, audience, if you, friends, if you didn't get your question answered, would you re uh, copy it, paste it at the bottom of the chat so that we could see it? And if the panelists are able to, then they can provide some, some feedback to you for that. So we're going to move on to some final thoughts here. So in about a minute or less, starting off with Awa. Awa was advocating for in-person meetings. Final thoughts. I would say don't underestimate the power of human connection because it can be very rewarding. And remember that we are adaptable. Don't judge it before you try it. And I encourage everybody to be flexible. Thank you. Flexible. Appreciate that. Thank you, Awa. Go to Marcus now. Your final thoughts about online. Very accessible. I was at a meeting at McGill Toastmasters. There was a lady who was disabled in a wheelchair. Guess what? I saw her a few weeks later at a Thailand Toastmasters meeting. She couldn't have done that if she wasn't online. So I think it brings people of all sectors, whether, you know, it, it's all inclusive. I like to think of it that way too. And guess what? You get to see how people in Pakistan, people in Africa, people in Switzerland speak versus people in America or South America or Brazil. And if you can't afford a plane flight, go online to a Toastmasters meeting. Thank you, Marcus. Marcus says, go online. Frank, over to you, advantages of alternating. Well, thanks, Abraham. So Alwa mentioned about the flexibility. Uh, I think, I think she's, she's right on and bang on about the human connection, the energy that you are, that you get when you're in person. And so, you know, the alternating aspect of, of, of that, of what we're doing just kind of speaks to what Marcus talks about, the advantages of being there uh, from anywhere in the world. But there's no way that we're as nervous talking on Zoom that if you were in front of, of a, a room of people, there's no, there's, no, there's no way that you can duplicate that nervousness that you get when you're speaking in front of someone that you know is right there. Uh, so, so having the best of both worlds, learning how to adapt to the, the modern world and changes that we have, and being in person, I think really speaks to how we can best give our members uh, the, the, the most um, benefit to their speaking skills. Thank you, Frank. Bang for your buck. And Lynette, over to you for your final thought for hybrid. Well, what can I say that hasn't already been said by my fellow panelists? There's major advantages to being in person and getting back that human connection that we are also desperately seeking. There are significant advantages to meeting online when we can be anywhere in the world, any time of day, any day of the week. To be able to put in just that little bit of extra effort and meld those two seamlessly. I think those that crave that human connection can get it. And those that wanna be anywhere in the world at any time can get that too. If we open up our clubs to the possibility of, of melding that together, then we give everyone what they want. But don't but kid yourself for a second, for a second. It is it a is challenge and it will require some work and some effort and some hard discussions. Thank you, Lynette. Friends, there is a bonus for you for sticking it out this long. Lynette is going to share with you her hybrid 
how to do a hybrid document. Not, not, it's not a hybrid doc, but, but it's a document about how to do hybrid. She's going to share that with you in the chat window. So friends, Toastmasters, leaders, countrymen, you've got lots of ideas here. I'm inviting you to take these ideas back to your club and see what works for you. I wish you all the best with your upcoming Toastmaster year.